Everybody knows lasers, from CD players to laser machining to laser eye surgery. Lasers are absolutely everywhere. But what you might not know is that before the laser came the maser. Now, lasers amplify light and masers amplify a microwave. And we're familiar with this section of the electromagnetic spectrum. It has Wi-Fi, 3G, 4G. It's what we call microwave communications. And we're very good at getting information from A to B, even in very challenging circumstances. And it doesn't get much more challenging than space. Yet, with microwave communications, we can get signals from the surface of Mars all the way to in, uh, to, to the UK, I was going to say, but to Earth. And that's 225 million kilometres. But if you look at this picture, there's a, there's a problem. It's a bit grainy. The reason for that is electromagnetic noise. Now, we're all familiar with noise. It's like trying to pick your child across a very noisy playground. It's really difficult. And it's the same with electromagnetic noise. What we need to do is to be able to solve this. We're familiar th with it. We have drop calls, we have interference on the line, and so forth. And we need to solve this because in the new era of big data, we have to be able to transmit signals faithfully. And there's a very close a relationship between the economic growth of a nation and its infrastructure with respect to microwave communications. This is a problem that we need to get to, and this is a signal-to-noise problem. So if you look at this uh, picture here, you can see that the signal we want is that blue line on the left. We need to enhance that. We need to amplify it so that it looks more like the thing on the right. Amplifying signals is what a maser can do without adding noise. So why don't we use masers everywhere? Well, look at that. It's very bulky. It requires cryogenic fluids to keep it going. It requires a huge magnetic field, so they were simply too bulky, far too difficult, and incredibly expensive to operate. So that's why we don't use them. But just supposing you can make a, a maser work at room temperature. Well, that's what we've discovered in my lab. We took some material from the lab next door, actually, where they were working on uh, organic uh, solar cell materials, and we re-engineered it in order to make this crystal maser. And the wonderful thing about this is that it doesn't need refrigeration, and it doesn't need a magnetic field. And without that, we have a clear line for miniaturization. And you can see the progress so far. One day, we anticipate that we'll be able to put this device onto a circuit board. And if we can do that, then we have the wherewithal to get images which are fantastic and to sense things which are difficult. So instead of uh, a, a selfie of the Mars rover, I think what we'll be able to see is the individual grains of sand on Mars. Small, simple, cheap. The three things that made lasers so widespread now offer the prospect of a room temperature maser everywhere. If we can pack all of this functionality into one circuit board and one device, then we have the wherewithal to sense a number of different things. We can sense chemistry, biochemistry, we can sense medical information, we can do diagnosis of disease in a single device. The Star Trek tricorder could soon be with us. Now, <clears throat> this was supposed to be impossible. The room temperature maser was supposed to be impossible, and it was for 60 years. So how were we able to come up uh, with the solution to this 60-year-old mystery? Well, I think what we were able to do at Imperial was to take a number of different labs, what they were doing, we needed a number of different disciplines. We needed material science, we needed chemistry, physics, measurement science. And if you put all of those together, then you really have the wherewithal to look at the basics of the science. And once you do that, then you can actually come up with something which is useful. So once you've done that, you then have the prospect of a maser which will operate at room temperature and solve a real-world problem. And the real world problem that we have is this noise in the connectivity that we have at present. So with the right team of people and the right disciplines that we're looking at, we're able to solve this particular issue, which is going to get worse and worse as we increase our connectivity. So the question that I'd like to leave with you is, what signal to noise problem would a room temperature maser solve in your industry? Thank you very much.